All right, I had mentioned earlier on a Facebook post that I would elaborate and expand upon what is good about the conscientious thought in thinking about regressing to play as an aging athlete and how regressing to play and adopting play principles as an aging athlete is actually a progression. So when you think about it, as a developing child, you start to develop your motor skills um, in a series of progressions, for lack of a better uh, explanation at this point in time. So when you think of an infant, when you think of a baby trying to start to develop skills requisite to locomotion, the baby will typically start with looking and eyes. So if you set something above a baby's head that it wants, it'll eventually try to look for either A, its favorite toy, or B, food, or whatever that child's thing is. Whatever that thing may be, the child will start to look for it first. What comes after our ability to move our neck and look around at our surroundings is rolling. Rolling is what comes next. So if you can move your neck, you're gonna try and roll over onto your stomach into a prone position from a supine position. So rolling is the next thing to acquire as a skill uh, as you're aging, right? So we've got looking, we've got rolling. After rolling, we're going to go with spinal extension. The child will start to prop itself up and extend through its thoracic cavity and try to pull its knees into its chest so it's going up to all fours, hands and knees. So we've got spinal extension next, then we've got spinal flexion and bringing the knees up towards the elbows. <clears throat> Again, trying to get onto the hands and knees where we see our next stage of development, which is crawling. Now this isn't picture perfect. I'm sure there's gaps that you guys can fill in in the audience, but for the purpose of our discussion today and for argument's sake, we'll just follow these steps, okay? So we've got locomotion next, we have your child on all fours, crawling around on their hands and knees, terracing around the house, getting into things, exploring, using their hands, sitting back on their bum, on their heels, and moving their hands around and trying to fidget through calves and investigate their environment. Um, so, uh, or trying to fidget through cabinets, rather, not cabs, and, uh, <laughs> become aware of what's in their environment and explore their environment with their hands so afterwards we see the child trying to prop themselves up and stand on two feet and involved in uh, bipedal locomotion we have proprioception kinesthetic awareness and balance so these are things that are attributes that are affiliated with our vestibular system the vestibular system is uh, inside the inner ear canal and basically what it is is it's a liquid that uh, allows us to have stability so if there's something wrong with your vestibular system quite often you get vertigo or you have an inability inability to maintain your balance so um, <clears throat> with bipedal locomotion this is what we're developing you can develop the vestibular system from infancy by balancing your child in your hand so holding your child upright allowing them to try and develop their core musculature their breathing and challenging their position just by how you hold them in infancy so if you want to develop an elite level athlete this is your first opportunity to do so and that is by starting to train the vestibular system from infancy so when it comes time for your child to express bipedal locomotion, for them to walk around on two feet, they're gonna be a little bit ahead of the game, hopefully, because you've started to train their vestibular system ahead of time. So the idea of balance of their head, of their body, isn't, in, isn't something that's foreign to them. It, it's actually something that's quite innate. It's something that they're comfortable with. They learn how to stabilize their head and they're not wobbling around. So we have the child now at a stage where they're um, walking. So the child will start to walk, will take a couple of steps, boom, they fall. So something that's a part of learning how to walk is also learning how to fall. So again, from the top, just to recap, we've got looking, we've got rolling, we've got um, thoracic extension, 
we have trunk and lumbar flexion as well and then we've got quadrupedal locomotion we have crawling then we have sitting and investigating our environment exploring with our hands then we have bipedal locomotion we have walking we have falling and then finally what ends up happening is we start to run we develop contralateral coordination we develop unilateral coordination between our hand and our opposite leg and finally we take locomotion to the next step which is running from running that's where you start to get more advanced expressions of athleticism more advanced expressions of movement and locomotion from there from running you can get into tumbling you can get into gymnastics and aerials and um, uh, flips and things of that nature how does this relate to an aging athlete an aging athlete should regress to fundamental movement patterns that's basically what my thesis of this video is this is the point that I'm bringing across to you today is that as you age you should want to go back to childhood and explore your environment and play little drills with looking and balancing and tricking out your vestibular system and um, getting back to um, being able to challenge proprioception and kinesthetic awareness where your body is in space and time that is that is what I mean by regressing if you think about it, this is how it's progressive. A majority of us in our adult lives will spend 70% of our day in a seated position. So we're talking fixed hip flexors, we're talking shortened hamstrings, we're talking losses of movement in the terminal end of our range of motion and our muscular fibers. So by actually regressing to a childlike level, we have the opportunity to stimulate the terminal end ranges of movement in our muscle fibers where we can reinvigorate those unused portions of our musculature. So what ends up happening then by adopting this philosophy of regression is you actually end up progressing and bulletproofing yourself. The number one injury among an aging population is hip displacement and hip fracture. And if you fracture your hip or displace your hip and you end up in the hospital, nine times out of 10, it's fucking game over. So you end up bedridden and shit out of luck. So my thought is, why not prevent that shit from happening right from Jump Street and let's go back in time to when we were children and start to look and roll and extend through the spine, flex through the lumbar spine. And I'm talking like, hey, maybe, maybe you may want to explore something like doing jujitsu where you're on the ground, you're prone, it's a relatively safe environment. There is always an opportunity to learn. And jujitsu is one of those opportunities where you have the chance to stimulate your brain, stimulate your body in a controlled environment, work with people that will encourage your growth, that will nurture this development that you have. And that's only one tool. From jujitsu, you can get into uh, gymnastics if you want and do modified versions of very simple gymnastics exercises that will help with stability and proprioception those two things together i think are a good foundation to start with when it comes to helping to train an aging population i haven't talked about lifting weights yet i haven't even talked about doing uh balancing drills or anything like that you would encounter with a physiotherapist i'm talking like baseline primal movement patterns gymnastics have been around for thousands of years jujitsu in its modern form has been around in recent time but traditional japanese jujitsu has been around for thousands of years as well. Systems of combat in general have been around for thousands of years. So perhaps moving backwards is really moving forwards. I'm gonna leave you guys with that thought. Like, share, comment down below. Let me know what you think about how regression is progression and what your views are on aging athletes and getting back to play and being childlike. Remember to subscribe to the channel above, guys, so you can stay abreast of every video that I upload. Thanks so much for sharing your day with me. Peace, love, and growth.